morning I hear the work bell ring oh, yeah. I head down to the kitchen I see the same damn thing No food on my table Ain't no pork in my pan But you better not complain, boy You'd be in trouble with a man Let the midnight special Shine a light on me Let the midnight special Shine a little light on me Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to Backville like City Limits. Light. My name is Ron George. And our guest today is Mr. Eddie Kay. Hi, everybody. My name is Eddie Kay. Oh, by the way, it's spelled K-A-Y-E now. <laughs> so, so you changed that? Yeah. Instead of just said, you know Mr. K. They like that idea. So yeah. I said, okay. That's, That's right. It makes I more do. sense. It's easier to write, too, because I always have, when I print it out and I do the uh, K, it's like, yeah, K-A-Y-E. Yeah, good. and you know, there was a famous actor, uh, Danny Kay. Oh, you know, He's right. funny. I remember him when I was in the eighth grade doing some funny things, you know, and Danny K spelt it that way. I said, you know, that's pretty good. I like it. K A Y E. That's yeah, good. That's good. So, for those of you that don't know Eddie, yeah. he uh, is the one that penned Christmas in Vacaville many years ago. Um, yeah. I know you have a CD with you. Why don't you hold yeah, well, it up and plug it a little bit and oh, tell yeah. us a little bit of the story about, about the song yeah, let's, let's and how it came about and so on. Okay. This is the first black and white CD. Uh, I had permission from the. Uh, from the back of the reporter. Black and white. It's, it's, it's a black and white. It's the first one. <laughs> and what, is, what does that mean? Like, is it like the CD itself is black and white? Or? <laughs> no. But anyway, the picture. The oh, the picture. The picture is uh, black and white. It's the first one. The first. first CD. But uh, the story of Vacaville actually comes with myself and my family coming from Hawaii back in uh, 1985. Uh, we arrived here uh, December 1985, and then in, in uh, January, my daughter was born, and um, that was a great time. But that December of 1986, I strolled down to the, uh, the uh, Vacaville Main Street Christmas lighting celebration that was tree going lighting. on at the time, yeah. the tree lighting, and I, uh, I noticed how wonderful it was, and I thought, mm. wow, look at these people, mm. they're giving out popcorn and hot chocolate, you know, and uh, onion soup. Is this going to be like a really long story? Yeah, but it was fun. It was inspirational. <laughs> so I, I need to get comfortable here then. Huh? Okay. <laughs> so I, I enjoyed it so much. Right. I said, you know, I want to be part of that. And being a singer and a songwriter, I wrote this song called Christmas in Vacaville. And a lot of people might know it by now. You know, I have it on iTunes also. But I wanted to let you know that I always thought Vacaville was a family town, you know, and my daughter and my kids. It's Cowtown, you know. Yeah, Cowtown. Cowtown, that's what that is. told me that. <laughs> that's a very good. But family towns, family that's towns cool, okay. yeah, it's okay. Right. In fact, Cowtown anyway, so, is yeah. So when I wrote the song, I made sure that I put in the, the words family town, oh. you know. Yeah. Because uh, one of the things my daughter and my kids, uh, as she grew up here in Vacaville, we actually had them on stage. And we were singing Christmas songs. I just had my guitar. And that, that's when it was kind of a small thing on yeah. stage that you know, was happening. That now it's a big deal. I remember that, you know. And it's funny yeah. that I never made connection with you and, and Hawaii yeah. when I knew you then. Yeah, but, and uh, uh, even back then I was doing the 12 Days of Christmas, you know, yeah. Hawaiian style. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. But that's how it all came about. And uh, somewhere in, uh, between 1990 or 93 or so, I finally recorded it, really nice, you know, with a guy named uh, Tony Esperance and his kids. Mm -hmm. thank, I thank them very much for that. Um, and we recorded the back tracks with it, recorded it, and now you know the rest is history because now it's called Christmas in Vacaville. Yeah. And again, you can uh, go on iTunes and um, actually download it if you would like. Um, but thanks for asking. Oh, yeah. It's a nice history thing. Yeah, it is. It's good. The only people that don't know you know all about yeah. the song. All right, thank you. you remember You're back welcome. a few years ago, we used to do an Old Roar Everson song, Pretty Woman? Oh, I remember that. Wow. Let's do that. I, I, I remember where I, where I was when that first came out back in Hawaii. Wow. I, <laughs> I, I kind of think that, too. Right? Where were it you? It kind of dates us, <laughs> don't it? <laughs> anyway, if I can remember that, I'll play it if you'll sing it. All Ten, right, give three, it a try. Four. Pretty Woman 
walking down the street, pretty woman, the kind I'd like to meet, pretty woman. I don't believe you, it can't be true, no one could look as good as you. in there somewhere but <laughs> nobody will notice it that sound really good hey we're going to take a short break for a commercial we'll be right back so stick around <laughs> all right <laughs> sounds pretty good can i see the guitar you play i've been known to Guitar. All right. Johnny Cash, I can tell. <laughs> that was Folds of Risen Blues. Every time I play that song, it brings back memories. Um, when I was like 14 years old, my brother, older brother, took me to a, a dance hall down. It's kind of on the Napa Vallejo Highway, yeah. Highway 29, you know? Yeah. Right there by the airport. Mm -hmm. And it was just a Quonset hut. And it was called the Dream Bowl. And it was um, kind of like the country music Nashville scene, but out here in California. Can 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 people now go and look on the Google it or whatever? They can, actually, they can. You know, a and, couple. And find it. Right, like a year ago, I went on and I found four posters. Somebody had taken pictures of four of the posters of of. Uh, no, so I understand. The dances. I understand. So the Dream Bowl was a place where a lot of these big entertainers would go to. Oh yeah. In fact. They were there before they really made it big, right? No, sort of? no, they were there when they. No, it was a it was a major stop along the along oh. the tour circuit. Um, it was on Saturday night, every Saturday night, uh -huh. and on the on the same bill, you might have Johnny Cash, George Jones, Buck wow. Owens, uh, and where was Black Jack Wayne? Would all, it was at the it's a place called the Dream Bowl over on Honey, Highway Twenty Nine, and it was just a funny Quonset Hut building towards the Napa Valley, huh? Yeah, it's a well. It's kind of like right in front of the Napa Airport, where Highway 29, the airport comes together. Uh -huh. It's it's right in that area, oh. and the building is still there today. It's it, wow. um, it's uh, I think an electric uh, contractor uh -huh. has the building, but it's just the same. But back then, it was this uh, you know it was a major country music nightclub, wow. and um, and kids could go into it. The bottom end of it was a was a honky tonk and a bar. Mm -hmm. And then uh, everybody just stood and watched the watched the show. There was no no seats, and um, and the kids we had to go upstairs into the balcony, and you could walk down to the end of the, and the balcony, and there was a railing, and look straight down at the yeah. entertainers. Well, uh, there was a man, Blackjack Wayne, that had a TV show, <laughs> and uh, and he would do commercials uh, to sell cars during the intermission, oh. and so the stage was like it was probably seven feet tall. So that he could stand there and, and uh, you know, be in the in the picture, uh -huh. 
And uh, so during the breaks, the uh, the stars would go up front and stand, and you could sign autographs, they'd sign autographs, and wow. talk to you. So when you're kids, you know, you walk up. Of course, they want to talk to the kids. Uh -huh. And um, and I remember I got to meet Johnny Cash and and Buck Owens and all of them. But, but Johnny Cash was like this m mammoth guy. I mean, seriously, he must. You know, been. when I was growing up, I never really thought he was, uh, you know, size and uh, his entertainers. But you bringing it up now, you know, it's like wow. You know, it is true. These guys were. Mm -hmm. You know, bigger than life, oh. not only in uh, their lives, but they're in their size, too. Oh, yeah. Johnny Cash, I never thought of him as so, a... Yeah, he, he was really big. He was, I'm, I'm going to guess six, six or so. Really? But big. I mean, uh -huh. shoulders. And I remember he shook my hand, and it was like this long. You know, it was like... <laughs> and uh, really nice guy, though. And, and you know, we, we kind of kidded about playing guitar. And, and yeah. he asked me if I could play Luther play the Boogie Woogie. And I said, yeah, matter of fact, if you get me up on stage, I'll do it. And, you know, and he laughed and said, nah, they fire me if I did that but um, <laughs> he was he was really cool and it was fun but that was the, the the really fun part about it is these guys were major stars I mean you, yeah. you listen to their stuff on the radio and you go see them and uh, it wasn't just one star it was two or three in one night uh -huh. and um, so it was quite a that was kind of my beginning of I think that's what I want to do I want to stand up there and play music so this inspired you to be it did it did and then songwriter and Entertainer that you are exactly, and then I discovered Elvis, and then that was, that was yeah. a whole other, <laughs> was a yeah. whole other side of me came out. But um, those was fun times. They, that was uh, that was inspiration. And so every time I play or hear that song, I always think about the Dream Bowl. Wow, terrific! You know, yeah. myself growing up in Hawaii, we we um, we're so far away from the mainland, but the songs that we hear, a lot of it was kind of like the old rock and roll and this and that, you know, and yeah. then Hawaiian music, you know. But what was interesting about the time that you mentioned Johnny Cash and things, my mom would be playing the country songs okay. you know, on the radio. She played, she'd listen to the, the, the country stations. And that's how it influenced me when I was young. Yeah. You know? And my dad would be playing the guitar, you know, and so it, did you I, Did you go over in Hawaii get, did, did they have a, did you pick up radio stations from the mainland or did they have? They had, no, they, they You they had, had a country there. station there in, in Hawaii. Yes, then. the country stations were there and they brought in the music and played and you know, yeah. and that's how we got to know uh, the mainland music. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we enjoyed that. Because even on the mainland, it was really strange. I mean, I grew up uh, in in the Bay Area, and um, El Sobrani, to be specific. And and at that time, there was KYA and in uh, KFRC radio, and yeah. out of San Francisco, yeah. and they were kind of the pop music. They play all the you know Elvis and Ricky yeah. Nelson and all that. And then you had uh, the country station which was uh, just this little teeny yeah. little little teeny station and uh, and they played strictly country and then you had uh, the rhythm and blues station and the KDIA and that was it you only had those those four stations so if it was pop it was there if it was country or if it was yeah. rhythm and blues and and uh, and we were really into rhythm and blues i mean i played all the jimmy reed stuff you know yeah. and all that you know <laughs> you know that kind yeah. of uh, you Fun know, stuff, you know. You may, you may be think of something. <clears throat> you know, in, in Hawaii, growing up in Hawaii, um, country music started, and the steel guitar was being played, right? Yeah, right. And actual country music people would go and learn some of the local Hawaiian type songs because the right. steel guitar was in there. Right. Marty Robbins was one of them, you know. But then it developed into the country music that we know today. Right. But it's very interesting of. of not finding music that you would like to do, you know, country music, yeah. but you would have to go back to Hawaii to bring in that, that, yeah. that steel guitar sound. Yeah. Real interesting. Well, that's true. When it first came over, because I can remember the, watching, um, you know, TV shows and stuff, that the steel guitar was really the lap steel, like, like in Hawaii. Uh -huh. And then later on, they developed the pedal steel that, they, that you yeah. see every, all the country guys play now, but, but they played the, the lap slide, yeah. and uh, that's where they got that sound. and, and uh, yeah, that was you, definitely you know, I from feel, Hawaii. I feel kind of special, you know, you're coming from Hawaii and knowing that um, the Hawaiian music and actually the steel guitar influenced country music yeah, it did. around America yeah. and around the world. It's interesting it's that, really, yeah, really, that they would have it over there. It's really beautiful. Because it took, you know, uh, uh, like the Beatles, when they came over, they talked about how our music influenced them and, and uh, yeah. you know, their first mm -hmm. couple albums were basically just mm -hmm. covers of, of our guys, Chuck Berry and Little yeah. Richard, you know, and the, yeah. and the rock and rollers. So it's 
Some influenced me when I was growing up, too. Yeah. You know, in fact, you know, we just did uh, Pretty Woman. Well, I remember where I was when that song came out, and that pounding beat, boom, 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 yeah. Pretty Woman, I mean, just caught you, you know, right oh, from indeed. the beginning. Yeah. And I remember where I was. And so rock and roll was, was really big yeah. in Hawaii, too. So, uh, But it's funny you're bringing this up now. It's just, yeah. it's, well, Roy Orbison, uh, uh, he was... I mean, he was, I loved his music, but he, he wrote all of his own music, and right. he had that really high falsetto, beautiful yeah, voice. They call him the operatic, he had right. the operatic um, sound. But he had. would write all of his songs for his voice. Yeah. And um, like Pretty Woman, it's in E, and, and that line, you know, yeah. that. Yeah. It, you can't play it anywhere else. You can't go lower and play it. But to put it in another key. So if you can't sing in his key, forget about it. You know. Did, then, did um, Robert Orbison? Did he go to the Dream Ball too? Uh, you know, that was that's a good question. Uh, I, not that I know of, because but there was a lot like Jerry Lee Lewis. Jer, Jerry oh, was wow. there, and mm -hmm. uh, with all people, he was there with George Jones. Yeah. Um, which is a strange combination because he was doing you yeah. know, great balls of fire and all that stuff. <laughs> and he was kind of this crazy wild man. Yeah. But he was but he was kind of considered. Rockabilly country, yeah. and um, you know he wasn't in Elvis's league to be just doing the the, the right. concert series Elvis was. So he was kind of in with the country, as was like the Everly Brothers, and and those people. But um, but Roy Orbison, he you know he was in that Elvis's league when he hit he hit big, and so when he yes. played you know, when he played the bigger arenas and stuff. Yes. And uh, but yeah, we liked his stuff a lot. Um, Elvis was almost. I don't say almost anybody could sing it, but but his stuff was easier to sing because it was in oh. keys that you could you could actually learn and sing. Right. You know, yeah. um, uh, talking about Elvis, I uh, when he did that uh, Aloha from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you might remember Aloha from Hawaii back. Um, ooh, when? I think it was Blue Hawaii. Uh, or no, was no, it? No, no. Oh, Aloha, the concert. Aloha from Hawaii. The concert. Yeah, the concert. Yeah, I remember that. I remember. Yeah. I, and, and and this this is true. This is true. I'm driving down the. Waikiki in my little car, you know, and I had my radio on, and the announcer comes on, he says, come, come down to the Hilton Hawaiian Village and uh, greet Elvis, and I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty cool, so I, I had my camera, you know, so I drove down there, and I, I and there's a heli helicopter pad mm -hmm. that goes from the Hawaiian Village out into the, the reef area, and then out into the uh, ocean a little, right. and there's a helicopter pad there, so here he is, he's coming in on this helicopter, lands, then he jumps into this black uh, jeep, and he's coming around, and the place is lined up. You know, a lot of students and kids mm -hmm. and everybody lined up, people, and he's coming around, and then he comes out towards me, right? And I knew, once in my life, I'm going to do something. So I look, I said, this is my one chance, right? So I look up, and I say, Elvis, one time. And he turns around, he says, oh, how you doing? And he shook my hand. And I shook wow. his hand. I took a quick picture, and then he went on, and we took. I took a few more pictures. But that was my Mr. moment. Hunk of hunk of love. You know, talking about Elvis. Uh, oh yeah. Elvis did a lot for Hawaii um, that a lot of people I don't think are really aware of. Uh, the Arizona Monument. That's correct. That's you right. You know, when they was uh -huh. uh, when he was over there before they built that, he. Um, he did a concert to help raise money, and um, and he had bought the uh, I think it was President Roosevelt's uh, yacht, and it was called the Potomac, and it, <laughs> and, it, and it was a really cool old you know the, back in the in the forties the yachts were kind of uh, you know they they almost looked like a, a PT boat they yeah. were kind of looking they had little round little round circle windows in them you know yeah. really cool anyway he had bought that yacht. And, and restored it and brought uh -huh. it over to Hawaii and then he auctioned that off and uh, part of the money went or the money went to the uh, Arizona, to the Arizona Memorial. Memorial. Wow. So that was you know that was one of the things that he did mm -hmm. and then of course the concerts later on uh, that he did I think was that um, matter of fact the one you were talking about where you had met him at yes that was like in 70, Aloha from Hawaii actually. yeah it was like in seventy four. 1974, I would guess. 75, somewhere around. Uh -huh. And those were both benefits that he yeah. did for, for Hawaii. So so he, he really had a connection to Hawaii. He, besides doing the movies there, he really You know, really that's really it. good. I'm glad he brought it up, folks. You know, um, very special. When you go there and you visit Hawaii, a lot of folks go to see the memorial. And um, if you know about it or if you're seeing our video for the first time, 
the thought of uh, remembering Elvis Presley, wow, comes mm -hmm. into play right there because he really did a good job in helping mm -hmm. um, our vets and what happened back in World War II and remembering uh, yeah. those wonderful heroes, you know. He, yeah, he was Beautiful. he was really patriotic. Um, I mean, he to a, to a fault. He just he loved yeah. this country. And uh, I was talking about the, the that yacht that he had brought over there, the Potomac. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how it ended up back here, but <laughs> is it here? In, uh, but well, years ago, I was over. Um, I, had an, I have an old boat that I was restoring, and I was over at the at the Oakland Estuary uh -huh. uh, along along the Embarcadero there, and um, and it was out there, and I had <laughs> spotted it, and, and of course had the the name on it, so you knew what it was, the Potomac. But it was all it was all run down, uh, you know, the paint was yeah. peeling. It was just it was a mess, and I thought. <laughs> Oh, wow, what a shame. So I kind of kept an eye on it. And it, it must have sat out there for 10 years. Wow. And uh, just gone to pot. And finally, the city of Oakland uh -huh. bought it uh -huh. and totally restored it. And it's still there. They made a, wow. a nice birthing Terrific. place for it. And so you can take rides on it and rent it and, and uh, so on. So that, that was kind of a funny wow. turnaround. Uh, and, and does it say anything about Elvis Presley? In you know, there, honestly, like I, I haven't been there. I haven't, I haven't been over to see the boat since they restored it. I just read about it in the paper and, and on the Internet. So I mm -hmm. um, have to take a trip and go over there and do that. Wow. So, so that, You know, in, in listening to the stories, we're talking about Hawaii and, and uh, of course, your, your Christmas in Vacaville song yes. and the album. Yes, uh, You had mentioned that you had a song, uh, I believe, in Angels. Yes. You know, um, the Vacaville uh, Christmas song, Christmas in Vacaville, is on iTunes. But the title of the album, and I have a few other Christmas songs on there, um, but the title of the album is, is called "If You Believe in Angels." Oh, okay. So I was thinking it was a you know Christmas in back of it. Well, what well what I found on iTunes, if you have a popular song mm -hmm. that people you know go to, right. then you just put in uh, Christmas in Vacaville, Eddie K. Christmas in Vacaville, it'll come right up because that's the most popular one on the album. This is the one we're talking about, of course, every year. But I had to name the album. And yeah. so I said, you know, my, I wrote a beautiful song about my wife finding her dad. And uh, I really believe there was a special moment that, you know, if you believe in angels, an angel helped her find her dad. I hear her laughing, I see her smiling, and still I see her thinking. Raised as a family, oh what a mommy, but still there's something missing. Sometimes she scolds me, why don't you help me? As the years went by Oh, is he gone now? Should I stop now? Then something catches her eyes She calls the numbers So many numbers But none connects the right line Operator, can you help me? Where can that number be? If you believe in angels, then you've got to understand the number was not listed, but now she held it in her hand a lifetime of wondering now was answered like a prayer she had found her father oh thank you angel somewhere
today A brand new family A heart that's happy Heaven's blessed her this way So welcome back. Yeah, Th we're back. That was really beautiful. That was oh, a really thank nice you. Song. Uh, tell us yeah. a little bit about how I wrote it. How you wrote it? You know, you know what was the inspiration? Well, like I said in this song, it's a true story. Um, for years and years, my my wife was uh, asking me about one day she'd like to find her a biological dad, and so we were married. And you know, years go by, and then she kept asking and wondering if she'd ever see him. You know, ever meet him. Yeah because she was uh, um, adopted by a wonderful man, Ray Coffer. Yeah. Just wonderful. Guy. So did she know her, both of her parents or just her, her dad? Or? Um, well, through the story, you know, in, in her story anyway, she, she um, her, her mom was married to someone else on a fast, you know, mm -hmm. uh, got married when she was young. Uh, her mom was only 14. Oh, wow. Anyway, so that didn't last, but she had a child. You know, and Melinda was born, and so fast forward, she meets me. We get married, you know, and then uh, we have our first child. And she starts thinking about her well, biological well, dad. Yeah, yeah. See how that works. So, through the years, she's talking about it, and you know, finally we end up. You know, we come up here to to uh, Vacaville, living in Vacaville, and she's watching this show called the Sally Jesse Raphael Show. Oh, yeah, I remember that, she's yeah. watching this show, and um. And they said, Seekers of the Lost, you know, send us a few dollars and you get these uh, phone numbers and things. You can find right. someone that you've been searching for for years. Right. And so she paid the money and she received all these different numbers. And one yeah. Saturday night in Vacaville, around Christmas time, I would think, I think it was around there, one Saturday night, uh, she gets, she puts all these numbers down and she starts making these calls. Wow. And I'm, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous, you know. So I, I've got my head down. I'm going like this and that, you know. I'm moving around. But finally, she gets to a number, and um, she's calling, and the operator said, uh, the operator comes on for some reason saying, no, there's no number like this, you know, or like that. Yeah. And she's calling, and then the numbers don't work. And then, but some, for some, on one moment in that evening, she heard the operator say something. And she, 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 I think she either called her back. She'll tell you the story better than I. She'll tell yeah. you, Eddie, you're going to get it right. Well, okay. <laughs> he didn't, but this he didn't is tell what, the story right. Yeah, this is my observance. Okay. He's sorry, Melinda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, so, and so she asked the operator, you just said something about someone in Upland, California, or yeah. somewhere like that. And so she, the operator said, yes, uh, if you had this number, this name, and the name was Stanley. But it was spelled yeah. in a certain way. Yeah. And so the operator, from out of the blue, as if the way I look at it, theatrically and spiritually, you know, mm. it's almost that the operator is sitting at her desk and an angel's behind her, puts, puts, puts her hand on, on the operator's shoulder and said, give her the number. Yeah. You know, I saw the feeling I was getting. Because right at that moment, the operator says, yes, I have this number. And so she gives the number to, you know, uh, uh, Melinda. Did she write it down? And she wrote it down. She wrote it down. She wrote it down. She calls the number, and it turns out it was her brother. Oh, wow. She didn't know it. You know, of course, she has to say a certain way. There's a way to speak to people, strangers, because they don't know who you, who's calling, right? right. So she's, she's calling and asking questions and things, and pretty soon he gets kind of... Like what? What's going Who are on? You? Yeah. But then she started to describe how her biological dad may have may look now, because yeah. through her mother. Didn't know. Did she know she had a brother? She didn't know she had a brother. Oh wow! So she finds out she has a brother, and right at the moment she's you know she's asking all these questions and and uh, his name is Rick, okay. and and she says and your dad's name and and he says yes, is you think he's yeah. home? He says I believe so. And he actually, you know, believing Melinda, of course, yeah. she really a contact, because he would say, you know, he used to talk about that he had a child, you know, somewhere, 
you know, but, you know, we kind of brushed yeah. it off. This right. was what would Rick, Rick would say. But finally, she gets the number from Rick, calls him up, and she made the connection. Wow. And uh, she found her dad after all these years. And that inspired me to write the song. Okay, yeah. there was a big uh, reunion that was going to happen. Yeah. You know, that finally she's going to go drive down to, um, uh, let's see, um, is that area down in the desert? Um, like Palm Springs? No, no. Um, uh, let's see. Regina Autry. Regina Autry. Oh, um, yeah, Apple Valley. Yeah, Apple, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, Apple yeah. Valley. Apple Valley area, right at the edge of the desert. Right. That's where her sister lives. Okay. She finds out she has two sisters wow. and a brother, and her dad was still alive. And she didn't know any of that. And she didn't know before. it. Wow. She didn't know it. Yeah. And so the reunion was coming. Okay, the song, my part. I just believed an angel helped her. This is why. And here's the, here's the thing I didn't say. The number that, she, that the operator gave her for her brother was unlisted. It was an unlisted number. The operator, in a way, was not supposed to give her the number. Yeah. Did she tell the operator the story, kind of? No. Yeah. She, was just, she just wanted the number. And the operator, mm -hmm. from out of the blue, just gave her the number. We found out later it was um, unlisted. In fact, the day of the reunion, or some days later, Melinda asked her new sister, why don't you check with Rick about the number? She did, and she, her own sister, you know, the brother, uh, uh, Lori, she didn't know that Rick's number, her brother, brother's number, was not listed. Right. It was like, I was so, you yeah. know, it was just so that's beautiful. That's so, a good story. So I wrote... So I wrote this song, and it started out, I was sitting out in the patio area of my house, and I was looking up through the, through the kitchen window, mm -hmm. and I saw my, my wife, Melinda. She was just having a ball with my, my kids in there, and she was laughing, and, and, you know, and I saw her, and I thought, you know what? I see her laughing, I hear her smiling, yeah. and still I see her thinking. That's how it all started. And of the, on the day of the reunion, the day of the reunion, I finished the song. I went out by a tree and I finally finished the song. And the moment came when I needed to get this off my chest and, wrote, and I sang the song for the family. And my new brother-in-law comes over to me after the song. He says, he says, that was tough, huh? I said, man, was that tough. Until next time, <laughs> this is, I'm Ron George, Vacaville City Limits. My and guest my, today is Eddie K. Eddie K. And uh, we'll see you around town. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Beautiful.